Hello friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA results, uh, predicted phenotype traits and even ethnicity calculator results with my own ethnicity calculator of a Neanderthal from the late Middle Paleolithic. Now the Neanderthal we'll be taking a look at is Mezhmaiskaya 1. Uh, I believe she is from the Caucasus, it's a woman, it's a female and her mitochondrial lineage is ND1B2. I don't know what kind of lineage that is. I'm not really familiar with mitochondrial lineages. And let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what time she is from. So it looks like she is from a long time ago, 680 to 580 centuries before the Common Era. Uh, this is even before the Upper Paleolithic. So this is, yeah, this is late Upper Paleolithic. I mean, late Middle Paleolithic, excuse me. This is before the Upper Paleolithic, pretty much. And let's go ahead and take a look at, so this individual lived in the Caucasus uh, around the time that the first Homo sapiens started arriving there. And let's go ahead and take a look at her results with my trait predictor. So we're going to start with Nashakot results, um, phenotype prediction calculation. With Nashakot, it seems like she's scoring a light brown eyes. Uh, with, with a score like this, when there's a lot of, when there's like 10% for blue eyes, 16 for dark brown eyes, what this means is that not a lot of relevant stuff was found in the file. So without a lot of the relevant information, you cannot make a very precise prediction. Uh, however, we just have to look at the largest number, and the largest number here is light brown eyes. For the hair color prediction, the largest number here is black hair. Once again, it's difficult to make a prediction when a lot of the relevant stuff is not found in the file. It's not a very high quality file. And it looks like she's got dark or brown skin as well. Uh, and for the hair texture, she's predicted to have kinky hair. All right. So kinky as in like, um, you know, African American or uh, Sub Saharan African hair texture. Let's go ahead and check uh, what. SNPs were used for this calculation, for the calculation of color. So yeah, you can see noth nothing relevant to blue eye haplotypes was even found in the file, and without this you cannot make um, an accurate guess of what kind of phenotype she has in terms of the coloring. So that's why if you look at the numbers here, the numbers are um, the way they are. Right, so what what is there to talk about in this in this genome? There is this genotype in DRD3, which is a typical genotype for most humans, leading to lower odds of autism. Good. Um, there is this genotype in OXTR, which means this individual has two variants for higher levels of empathy, <laughs> which is kind of interesting. I noticed that there is variation in OXTR among Neanderthals. Some Neanderthals uh, have you know this genotype for higher levels of empathy so many other tools have genotype for lower levels of empathy I know this it's a variation with them uh, for diabetes it looks like she does not have type 1 diabetes although Neanderthals might have their own variations that increase the odds of type 1 diabetes and such if they even have this illness at all because I feel like it's a very modern illness uh, all the diabetes illnesses a lot of illnesses I feel are modern illnesses that didn't exist like in uh, Middle Paleolithic. Um, this genotype, which means this individual has two, two variants for higher odds of type 2 diabetes. I feel like if you check the score for type 2 diabetes, it's going to be above average. Let's check. Yes, the score for diabetes, type 2 diabetes is above average indeed. For schizophrenia, it's below average. For Alzheimer's, it looks like nothing for Alzheimer's was found. Um, Alright, let's scroll further. Uh, no variants for increased pain sensitivity in SCN9A, really good. Uh, no MYBPC2 mental retardation variants, really good. And it looks like for EDAR, she does not have East Asian EDAR. Uh, so pretty much typical genotype in EDAR for you know Europeans and Africans, basically not East Asian EDAR. Uh, lower odds of meth-induced psychosis, very interesting. I'm not sure what the ethnic implications of this genotype are. And not a carrier for 1B tyrosinase negative occutaneous albinism, not albino. For familiar Mediterranean fever, it looks like there is three variations that were found in the file and she doesn't have any risk variance in either of them. Um, for cancer spano, it looks like she doesn't have any risk variance for this variation in breast BRCA1. Uh, but, but then again, there's a lot more that simply aren't determined <coughs> that simply aren't in the file excuse me okay 
she is not a carrier for variants of Bloom syndrome, really good, and no variants for uh, GSS and zero risk variants for leprosy. That's for the rare diseases panel. For celiac disease panel, it looks like she has two risk variants in this variation. And let's scroll back and check how many um, risk variants for celiac panel she has in total. Okay, so so, uh, so for the celiac disease, she has two risk variants out of six, and they're both in the same variation. Uh, and for GSS, she has zero out of ten. Really good. Healthy. Uh, for breast cancer, zero out of six. Also pretty good. For testicular cancer, zero out of two. Also pretty good. Let's go ahead and check back uh, what we have here. You see, unfortunately, this isn't a very high quality file, so a lot of the important stuff is not found here. Uh, for allergies panel, it looks like she has this genotype, which means two alleles for higher odds of allergies. Okay. And yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. Now let's go ahead and check her ethnic calculator results. So you see this ethnic calculation was done with 97 SNPs, and she's scoring 85.4% African. Very typical score for Neanderthals to score, you know, overwhelmingly African. But we're going to go ahead and check with the oracle who she is closest to. And I do remind you, I have Neanderthals in the oracle of this calculator as well. Let's go ahead and open Mahaduo. Put her here. Um, we're going to go ahead and put this into target. This we're going to remove. And let's check. So she is closest to Vindija Neanderthal. Vindija is um, Vindija Neanderthal is from Europe. It's a European Neanderthal. Followed by that, she's closest to this um, Neolithic period Shamlaka genome. Well, it's Neolithic for Europe, but for um, actually for Europe, it might even be Mesolithic. But uh, for for Africa, for Cameroon, where Shamlaka is from, it's a really, really ancient genome. So she's similar to a lot of Africans. She's similar to Khoisan hunter-gatherer, uh, Mota from Ethiopia hunter-gatherer. Uh, African-American shows up here. The distance to African-American is also pretty low. <coughs> Another South African hunter-gatherer shows up here. Uh, further, it's Clint chimpanzee and Oko the gorilla. You know, I have a chimpanzee and gorilla in the reference too. Um, you know... Uh, the chimpanzee, the gorilla, the Neanderthal, and the Sub-Saharan Africans, they kind of make a cluster together. They're all very similar. And, um, yeah, that's kind of what it looks like. Let's go ahead and check the Oracle, single mode Oracle. So with the single mode Oracle, she's getting modeled as a mixture of 31% Vindija Neanderthal, 28% South African hunter-gatherer, 27% Korean. Surprising and 13.4% quotas Neanderthal. I think the Korean shows up because not a lot of SNPs were found in the file. Uh, let's go ahead and check what if we reduce that to three populations. So, reducing that to three populations, we get a score that looks like this 41% Vindija Neanderthal, 37.8% South African hunter gatherer, and 20.8% Korean. What if we add distance column to 0 0.5? Same thing. What about 1? Okay, now it's different. Now it's 68% South African hunter-gatherer, uh, Bob001, plus 32.0% Korean. Okay, the Korean seems to be showing up every time. Um, let me do some o other manipulations here. Okay, I, I, what if I remove the Korean? I don't like the Korean showing up here. Let's go ahead and remove both the Koreans. Okay, now it's Chinese showing up in place of Korean. Interesting. So she is 42% um, of indigenous Neanderthal, 29.6% South African hunter-gatherer, 20% um, some kind of East Asian, Korean, Chinese, whatever, and 8.4% Hoisan hunter-gatherer. All right. Well, that's pretty much all there is to it. Thanks for watching until the end. You can download this file in 23andMe format from link which is in the description of the video. And um, thanks for watching. Goodbye. Leave a like.